Let's look at the most fundamental and famous problem at incidences. Consider a set of endpoints and end lines in the plane. The number of incidences between these points counts how many times the points lie on the lines. For example, in this picture, the point P1 lies on three lines, so it counts three incidences. The same is true for the points P2 and P3. So in this picture, we can count nine incidences between these six lines and these three points. We'd like to see what is the maximum possible number of incidences between endpoints and end lines. The main theorem here is the Semeredi Trotter theorem that says the maximum possible number of incidences between endpoints and end line is bounded by this expression. For the rest of this video, I will assume M and N are equal. Although whatever we discuss here also works when M and N are not equal. Before going through the proof of this theorem, we would like to create examples and to see how we can actually maximize or increase the number of incidences between endpoints and end lines. To do so, it is obvious that we should be placing our points in such a way that each line that we draw passes through many points. The easiest way to achieve such a thing is to use grids. So let's start by looking at a grid of size n, or n points. The side length of such a grid should be square root n. In such a grid, we can draw lines that, have, that pass through many points. Each such line creates lots of incidences. But as we start to create more and more diverse set of lines, it becomes obvious that maybe this regular grid is not truly the best way of doing it. And in fact, it turns out to get the symptotically highest number of incidences possible, we need to look at an irregular grid. Such a grid will have one side much longer than the other side. So in this picture, we assume that this side has k plus one points, or in other words, the length of this side is k, whereas the other side has b times k points. To create lines in this grid that pass through many points, we can use the following. We can start by looking at the origin and connect it to a point that lies on the top edge of a 2 times 0 over 2 rectangle and then extend this line to infinity. As you can see, this family of lines has been created by uh, connecting this origin to the green point. But how do we count the incidences in such an example? First, observe that such a line will pass through at least k other points on its way out. This is easily seen by considering the side lengths of this smaller rectangle. This smaller rectangle is k times smaller than the big rectangle. And thus, this line on its way out will pass through at least k points. Next, we need to count the number of points and the number of lines that we have created. The number of points is easy to estimate. It's roughly b times k squared, or symptotically it's b times k squared. The number of lines is a little bit difficult. First, observe that by connecting uh, the origin to a point at the top edge, we have b over 2 choices for the green point that is reflected here in this term. The second term, however, uh, reflects how many times I can shift this line to the right. An easy calculation shows that this intersection point, the intersection point of the line and the top edge of the big rectangle, lies to the left half of the big rectangle. In other words, I have at least b of b times k over 2 possible ways of shifting this line to the right. And thus, the total number of lines that I can, that I can draw is b squared times k asymptotically. As we discussed, each such line will pass through k points on its way out, and thus the number of incidences is a factor k bigger than the number of lines. And now, given these equ uh, equations, we like to maximize the number of incidences while keeping these two expressions roughly equal to n. It is easy to see that such a choice is guaranteed uh, by picking b equals to symptotically equal to n to the one third and picking k symptotically equal to n to the one third as well. If you do this choice, you'll get a grid that will create roughly 
and to the four-third incidences between points and lines. We now look at the proof of the Merritt Trotter theorem. Consider a set of n lines and n points. We would like to prove a bound on the number of incidences i defined by these points and lines. The first observation we need to make is that n lines create at most n squared crossings or intersections. This is because every pair of lines intersect exactly once. In fact, you can prove a better bound, but uh, for us it doesn't matter at this point. Second thing we need to do is to define a graph. We define a graph by picking the points as the vertices. In this picture, there are 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 vertices. The edges of this graph are the line segments connecting these vertices defined by the n input lines. The observation that we can make here is that if you pick a line that has t incidences, that line defines t minus 1 edges. In the picture, the blue line has three uh, points on it, and therefore it defines two edges. If we sum up all these incidences over all the lines, we get to i. And since each line defines one less edge than its number of incidences, the number of edges in this graph will be i minus n. And now it remains to recall the crossing uh, lemma from a previous video. The crossing lemma says, in a graph with e edges and v vertices, there are at least this many crossings between its edges. If we plug in the values that we have, we know that the number of crossings is at least i minus n cubed divided by 64 times n squared minus n. However, we observe that in a graph created by n lines, there can be at most n squared crossings. This means the number of crossings is upper bounded by n squared, and thus we must have n squared bigger than this value here. If we simplify this, we get that the number of incidences will be bounded by n to the 4 thirds plus n, which proves the Zemmer-Dietrato theorem in the special case when n lines and n points are present.